I'm a big car fan. It doesn't matter to me if it's something like this or something like this. They're both good in their own right. And if a car's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. It's based on the car's individual merits. Either way, if I had to pick a genre of car that is my absolute favorite, the one that I would spend the most money on if somebody give me millions of pounds, it would be the hot hatch. I'm an 80s, 90s child. I love hot hatches. I would get one at every opportunity. It's the sort of thing that the UK has had a borderline obsession with for many, many years. It has to be fun. It has to be relatively small, ideally a hatchback of course, and not necessarily really fast, but quicker than the car it's based on. In what is now the third, I guess, in a series of content cars, the first being the sub 5,000 pound EV, that was the 4,400 pound Renault Zoe. Then it was an EV that was no more than two years old for no more than 10,000 pounds. That was a say at me, which was that good. We actually decided to keep it and sell the Mini. And now this is the third one, but I've been a little bit more selfish on this one. I've bought a car that I've been keeping an eye on well, for quite some time. For me, this was and is the first electric car that ticked that box. Now on the used market, it's got, well, a lot more affordable. I'm not saying it's cheap, but for what you're getting, I think it's now a good time to get one. I imagine this will divide the comment section. There'll be some that think it's not, and some that think it is. I'll come back to that later on in the video as to why I think the car I've just bought does indeed tick the hot hatch box. So given those constraints, what is this? What am I about to bring into this garage to show you the next EVM mobile? It is coming up after this. Okay, before I show you the car in question, let me show you one significant reason as to how I'm able to buy a content car for YouTube, and it's down to these guys in this case. They are called Allied Nippon, and they're producing EV-specific products. These are brake pads designed for EVs called EV+. Plus. It's quite a big deal for me because we're getting products that you will get from the motor factors that are designed just for electric vehicles. In my fruit, I have these. Brake pads are just brake pads, aren't they? That's what I thought. But EVs do have some things that would mean that tailoring them to specifically for electric vehicles, it kind of would make sense. They're usually heavier and quicker than the car they're based on. They've got a ton of different models from the Leaf, the Nero, the Zoe, the Model 3. Basically, if it's an electric vehicle, I imagine they'll end up with Allied Nippon EV Plus brake pads. EV plus brake pads feature ultra low noise properties, certified free from harmful copper particles that are proven to damage marine ecosystems. Every day is like being at school, isn't it? Brake boost instant friction. Instant friction layer, resin based compound enhancing braking performance during the initial bedding in period. Scorching, additional heat treatment process that takes place after the pad is cured. The process improves friction stability, particularly at high temperatures. Multi-layer braking shim. Something I never thought I'd say on the camera. Such shims are more durable and act as vibration dampening to eliminate unwanted noise. They've been around for a long time of Allied Nippon. So the fact that they're taking EVs seriously enough to make specific products for them, again, it just points to where we're going. Whether you like EVs or not, they are taking over. And I have to say, this is my favorite water bottle ever. EV Plus, electric vehicle man. Oh, that's quite snazzy. Okay, let me show you the car in question. And again, a massive thanks to Allied Nippon for sponsoring the channel because I genuinely wouldn't be able to do stuff like this without sponsors. It's in fact of YouTube. It's just something that happens. And a big hello to those that have skipped this advert to get on with the content. Well, it didn't work because if you're after a build for purpose, superior stopping power, ultra low noise, and environmentally conscious brake pads, then Allied Nippon EV Plus. Thought you skipped it, didn't you? Ha! Right, now that is done. Let me show you the car in question. I'll move this out and get that in. The BMW i3S, the S being the key part. In fact, let me move the camera so you can get a better angle of this, this beauty. This for me, 100% stinks 
of hot hatchiness. It's got that aggressive look. I'm sorry, but for me, this looks, in this colour maybe, it just looks the part for me. This is subtly aggressive and I think it looks fantastic in this colour. I can't wait to machine polish and ceramic coat this one. And let me tell you about the specifications, because as I said, this is the i3S, not the standard i3. The difference is being, this has 181 brake horsepower, whereas the other one has the standard i3, 170. So it's not a major increase, but it is a bit better. It's also got 199 pound foot of torque instead of 184. Uh, not to 60 time is down to 6.8 seconds, although in all the timed sort of videos and stats I've seen, it's quicker than that in reality. Uh, so that's 0.4 seconds quicker than the standard i3. Top speed's increased, but it's irrelevant really, it does 99 now. Uh, so sport suspension, we've got a wider track, so they've widened the wheels a little bit because the original i3 was a little bit skittish, especially with the narrow tyres. They've lowered the ride height, they've got different springs and dampness on it, and they've got wider tyres as well. All those together makes it significantly better in terms of handling, which for me is how the i3 kind of let me down a little bit. We, we had it, we, we reviewed it, it was a brilliant car. In fact, we did the North Coast 500 in under 16 hours in an i3 quite a lot of years ago now. But brilliant as it was and is, it just, it, you know, it, it just leaned, it, it just, it, I didn't feel comfortable pushing it through the country roads that I'm surrounded by, you know, things like that. The, the North Coast 500, for example, perfect test for it. This is just so much more planted. It's got sports mode now, which happens the throttle response and the steering effort, improved traction control, um, as well as a couple of uh, cosmetic differences like gloss, back, gloss black wheel arches and so forth. Now, there's a body kit that I'm really tempted to get, which will turn it from this into, well, I just found this on uh, Google Images, but essentially into something like this. If you add my black wheels to that, I think that looks fantastic. And again, it ticks all those boxes. So how much do you think this costs? It's a 70, so 2020 70 Reg i3S with 45,000 miles on the clock. I'll show you the stats in terms of the, uh, sorry, not the stats, the specifications. It's got the sunroof, it's got CarPlay, it's got a couple of extras. The only thing it's missing for me personally is the Harman Kardon sound system. I'd, I'd, I would like that, but you can't have everything. It's, it's in perfect condition. As I said, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And uh, what would you price this at on the used market right now? Because this was well into the 40s when it was brand new. So that just shows what happens in three and a half years. And I don't care because when you're buying a used car, that's a good thing. This whole beauty, this hot hatchery in EV world cost me 15 and a half thousand pounds, which I think for a three and a half year old BMW i3S is very good price. I am more than delighted at this. It will hold its value well. Now it's dropped this much. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. It feels like a grown-up car inside, even though it's a small car. Here she is, and look, we have BMW grills before they went wild, wide mouth and ridiculously large and ugly. So it's good old school BMW. And again, you've got that squat appearance. You've got the black gloss wheel arches that um, are unique to the i3S. So that's kind of is a tell. These have got the optional black wheels as well. Uh, you've got the charge part there. You can see from there, the fact it's lowered a little bit, the wider track, it just makes it stand out a little bit more. It really does make a difference compared to the standard i3. And this has got something which is utterly unique. And even BMW said they won't be doing again because there's no need, not in a standard car. And it helps if I, of course, unlock it. It has the carbon fiber tub. Look, this means it's light, it's strong. It's everything that you would get from essentially almost a supercar, a carbon fiber chassis in a normal car for 15 and a half grand. I just think it looks great and I can't wait for the weather to improve so I can finally get it proper shining, popping out. The, again, the machine polishing. I know any black car will look good. This is just straight from the uh, dealer I bought it from. So uh, yes, it's, it's got the, the glossy crap on it, but it just needs a good going over. And then I think it will look superb, even though this is lowered. It's still a little bit 
of a high climb into these sort of thing. But every time I get in, I just look at that carbon fiber chassis and think that is so unique. It won't be repeated. This isn't a review or anything, so I'm not going to go through everything. But ultimately, yes, it's got a very unique look. Some of this will, again, divide the comments. You won't like it or you might do, but it's fully recyclable uh, or it's made from fully recycled materials, which is nice. You know, it's always nice to, to think, well, that's why it's like this. It, that's why, again, I, I like it because it's unique. It's got a purpose for what it's done. You've got a top loading glove box, which is actually usable. A little bit of a tray down there for your crap, probably your phone. This one, if I just turn it on a second, comes with the wireless Apple CarPlay. The best system known to man for me, uh, better than touch screens and so forth, is the iDrive, where you can just change it like that. It's so much easier to use and you've got buttons. Look, I can turn the air conditioning on with buttons. There are no touch screens in this. Let me just turn that off. I think I'll have a bit of heated seats. And if I just look up here, we have an actual sunroof. I believe that's an optional extra. It would have been nice to get a, a better interior in terms of the do a... I forgot what they call loft interior or something. You know, leather seats, essentially. But I'm more than happy with these. They're just as comfortable. This had everything I wanted. Everything I would pick if I specified a new one other than the speakers. So I, that, that's a compromise I'm willing to live with. It's got that. It's got your extra cup holder, which I think comes out. There we go. Uh, oh, my God. I mean, this car just keeps on giving. I found 50p from the previous owner and that's mine now. See, it's already saved me money. This is it. It's gone 90% at the moment. It reckons 145 miles of range left. Um, I've yet to do any real traveling. So I don't, I don't know about the efficiency or anything like that. I'll do that in a future video, no doubt. Uh, you got the usual stuff. I don't know that much about the i3s if I'm honest in terms of what comes as standard So you got the cruise control wireless Apple CarPlay. I believe that was extra um, And the sunroof extra of course heated seats Let me know if they're extra or not again any i3 experts out there the back seats It's a two plus two of course. So it's a four-seater car, which is perfect for us We're after a second car the Tesla does all the the miles so to speak um, and this is just the, you know, well, if we keep it anyway, this will be the second car. The boot is in a strong point of the i3 range. It's not that big, to be honest. But if you look under here, you've got nothing. You ain't going camping in it. But again, this, I don't think, is a car that typically you would buy as an only car, unless you're living in the city, perhaps. Uh, i3S badge, of course. So you can show off to the i3 owners. CCS, all the usual stuff. And it's got a light. It's amazing how the little things make a difference. One of my favorite features of the i3 in general is the suicide doors. <laughs> I mean, look at that. It's quite a unique shape. It's not the only one to do it, but again, it highlights the carbon fiber chassis that I keep on pointing out and I really do like. Of course, the i3S comes with brake discs at the front and Oh, who's put these Allied Nippon EV Plus brake pad box right in front of the car I'm about to talk about? That's really annoying and probably ever so subtle. Let me know in the comments if you notice what I did there. Oh yes, and the discs at the back too, of course. I think it's that uniqueness which has always appealed to me with the i3 and now the S, of course. It still looks as good today as it did when it came out back in 2014. It's a decade old is this design. If this came out right now, I don't think anyone would question, apart from the fact that it's got a normal BMW grille instead of a ridiculous one, that it wasn't modern in terms of its looks. But the big question is, of course, and it's a key factor of hot hatchiness, is the handling. It has to handle really, really, not just really well, but it needs to be fun. The best car I've ever had on these roads, which is one that we owned for nearly seven years. The longest car I've ever owned was the Mini Cooper S, which we sold fairly recently to get uh, in favor of the say at me. So we went full electric. Well, it was a Mini. It was sublime, it was poised, it was chuckable, it was fun. Is it as good as a Mini? Because you've got the extra weight, of course, of the batteries. And with this being the 40 kilowatt hour bigger battery version, then that's gonna have a bigger effect than the original i3, which is why they did a carbon fiber chassis all those years ago, because BMW wanted to offset some of the weight of the batteries by doing such a light chassis. And that's why they will never do another one. They've said we will, there's no need. 
battery technology is much better now. We don't need to do the carbon fiber side of things. And every single person that has owned one has said that they loved owning it. It, it really is a car person's car, if that makes sense. It's pretty in sport mode, of course, which is unique to the i3s. I mean, it's got the speed. 100% it's got the speed. <laughs> it's quick, I believe, but I'm not sure if I can verify this. Please do let me know in the comments below um, if you've got this somewhere. That this was the fastest accelerating car, the i3, when it came out to 30, not to 30, than any BMW ever made, including M3s, M4s, M5s, any car they've ever made, production car. And it's a meaningless statistic, apart from the traffic light Grand Prix, of course, but ultimately it is fast. Like all BMWs, or most now, rear wheel drive. So it's got balance. It's definitely still got that height, that narrowness of the original i3. You know, it's just the shape of the car. So I'm gonna say, you know what? It's 90% of the way there, of a petrol Mini Cooper S. I think the shape of it, the rear wheel drive changes things as well. You know, it changes the dynamic of any car, not necessarily for the, for the worst, to make it worse on these sort of roads, but it changes how you can chuck it around. Yeah, it does lean a little bit still, but ultimately, <laughs> it's got rid of that skittish nature completely that the i3 had and all of a sudden I'm in an EV that gives me this not because of ridiculous straight line speed but because of how enjoyable it is to drive in a safe manner I'm not I'm not doing too much ridiculous you know and, and I know every youtuber would say that but you get my point you can have fun within the uh, limits of legality should we say which is why the UK loves its hot hatches, I guess. Because you can push something that's got decent performance, that's not ludicrously fast, and feel like that you're getting the most out of it. The EV6 GT that we had a month or so ago on the channel, it was too fast. 600 odd brake horsepower in a big car. It, it, you could not put the, your foot to the floor without essentially ending up in another universe. It's quiet still, it's composed. It doesn't bounce around anywhere near as much as the i3 and you know the me and various other small cars do. You know, it's, oh, I wonder if lowering it just a little bit more with a schnitzer kit will just finish it off completely. I do miss that interaction of a manual gearbox that the Mini I had anyway had, but that's an EV thing, isn't it? You can't really get around that one. But I'm having fun, and that's what you want, isn't it? Fun in a hot hatch. You don't have to be speeding. You don't have to be necessarily going on a track. But as long as it makes you smile, then that's all that matters. So I want to know if you agree with me. Do you put the i3s in that hot hatch zone? Do you agree that it was the first one? You know, Model S and things like that were quicker, but they aren't hot hatches. They're too big. They're massive. Overall, I'm utterly delighted with this. I'm probably going to try and do the man mass thing and hope my wife, who's driven it once uh, for like two miles, uh, will get on with it, will like it. Well, it's a small car, although it's bigger than the me, and she really likes the me, and I do too, to be honest. But that extra 20, 30 miles that this will do, the performance, it won't bother her or anything like that. You know, the, car, the, the stuff I like not interested um, but if she likes it as well then we may end up keeping this rather than just being a contact car and then selling the me or we'll end up selling this because you know after two or three months or whatever because I'm, I'm done with it I've got the content and then I use that money to buy in the next car and so forth there's no warranty on the car but the battery I think is eight years and 100,000 miles so you know that that's really not a concern so yeah I'm delighted so let me know what you think does this tick the boxes I've been talking about the entire video? Does this float your boat? Is this something you would consider? Now we're looking at this sort of price bracket. Although they tend to be, I reckon about 16, 16 and a half upwards for this level of age and price. I do think I've got a good one here, value wise. Thank you to EV Plus brake pads, the alloyed Nippon brake pads for sponsoring this channel because without stuff like that, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. 
Um, so, yeah, brilliant. I'm happy. Let me know what you think. See you soon.